Welcome to The State of Us. Real people with honest opinions and the future of responsible media. Here's your host, Justin T. Weller. Venezuela's military backs Maduro while President Trump in the United States back Guado, the opposition leader, as the legitimate president. Well, why do you care if you're somebody named Caleb Spinner just walking around, you know, random Joe Schmo, uh, doesn't know anything about Venezuela, then why why do you care about this? Uh, well, number one, let's start with hopefully you care about what the U.S. is involved in around the world, because whether you support us meddling in other people's business or not, uh, it's relevant to everything that goes on here at home, our national security, uh, our national economy, all of that. So you could care from that that angle. Uh, you could care from the spread democracy, America take over the world kind of ideology. Uh, you could also care because this is counter to a lot of what Trump's foreign policy has been. Or is it? And that's what we're going to talk about, part of it anyway. But of course, we couldn't begin this critical conversation without your friendly redneck liberal, Lance, Lance Jackson. Jackson. Venezuela, oil. Right? Oil. Oil. <laughs> <clears throat> yep. Okay. So that so we care from the oil standpoint. Mm-hmm. That falls into my economy thing from before. China, the Soviet Union. They're involved, right? They've loaned money to Venezuela. Mm-hmm. So we could we care because we don't like to get beat by them. Mm-hmm. Well, I you know, major impacts. Yes. I mean, if we step in here and decide to do some different things in Venezuela than the Russians or the Chinese, how does that affect trade with China? Uh, Trump's relationship with Putin. I mean, this is an interesting Putin pie that Donald Trump has put his thumb in. Yes, here in okay. Venezuela. He's taking on some people that have kind of been his friends and not his adversaries. So it's interesting to see what he does and goes from where he goes from here. So the Wall Street Journal reported on Friday, January 25th, that since Venezuela's economy began its collapse in 2014, Mr. Maduro has essentially ruled along with the military. He has at least 10 active duty or former generals as cabinet ministers, and the army runs everything from state oil uh, to mining and food imports. In fact, quote, it's very hard to organize a coup in Venezuela, said Harold Trinconis, a Venezuelan expert at Stanford University. The military is, quote, divided, corrupt, and compromised, and closely watched, end quote. Still, the coordinated recognition of Mr. Guado as the future president, or as, as the true president, excuse me, by the U.S. and others, coupled with massive demonstrations, is meant to ratchet up the pressure on the military, according to some analysts. There is evidence, Lance, of at least some opposition to Mr. Maduro within the military. This week, two dozen low-ranking National Guard members attacked a Caracas military outpost, but were soon overwhelmed and arrested. Some reports are estimating that as many as 4,000 soldiers have deserted in the past year, and many more have requested formal discharge. Containing unrest without widespread bloodshed could prove difficult in a country where economic output has fallen by half during the past six years. Half, Lance. Hyperinflation has ravaged earning power and annihilated savings and chronic shortages have led to widespread hunger and an exodus so far of some three million Venezuelans. Mm -hmm. They got some problems. Have had for a long time. Right. I mean, this isn't the first hyperinflation. This isn't the first issue they've had uh, this this problem uh, in the last fifteen twenty years. So I have to start out, Lance. So, so there, it's been a tough it's been a tough place to live for the last twenty thirty years. I have to ask you, okay? So according to at real Donald Trump on Twitter, right? Okay. The citizens of Venezuela have suffered for too long at the hands of the illegitimate Maduro regime. 
Today, I have officially recognized the president of the Venezuelan National Assembly, Juan Guado, as the interim president of Venezuela. Well, Maduro's actually been president one year, right? He's just entered his second year as, as president. Yes. Now, if you want to go back to Hugo Chavez and talk about some other issues in Venezuela with dictators and things that were going on, military supported dictators, um, that'd be one thing. But you know, Maduro's only been president for a year, so well, far, he would, far, far, in the words of Donald Trump, far, far, far too long, right? Far, 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 too, 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 long, 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 because that's how we emphasize things does, when we have no vocabulary. We just say the same word multiple times. I know it I know it might be hard because hence maybe why front ending with some of Trump's many shortcomings, depending on who you ask, um, the president's many shortcomings. Do you think this is the right move for the United States? It's, you know. Did Trump make why, a good decision? Why Venezuela? Why is this where you're going to pick your battle? You tell me. And why now? Well. Okay. I'm asking if you think it's a good idea. You, I mean, you're the one that told me, right? In the Middle East, we're talking about Syria. You, you have an elected. We don't. You have an elected official. Uh-huh. Who was elected. By the people. Well, supposedly. We got one of those in Syria, too. Right. And, and supported and supported by the military. We got that in Syria. Who's supported by the Chinese and the Russians. And same thing in Syria. And so we're getting out of Syria, but we're going to go into Venezuela. Well, now we might not be. We don't know. I mean, but that's Syria. my point. You understand? This doesn't make sense. Well, I mean, it's, 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 not, it's inconsistent it's not, with his ideology. Exactly. I mean, but I'm asking if it's a good so, thing. We can get to whether or not it's a good thing for Trump I'm gonna, for I'm gonna the U.S. Say, I'm going to say no because what's what's driving it? This can't just be, you know, and, and all of a sudden now we're becoming an international player. Trump wants to recede within the borders. I mean, if this were a policy that I thought the president believed in wholeheartedly and was going to follow around the world, I would jump back and support it 100 percent. I would jump in and support it 100 percent. But it's so out of character, it goes against everything that he's told me for the last two years that he believes in and that he wants to do. My first thought is, what's his real motive? It can't be to support the people of Venezuela and to get a duly elected democratic government in there. So you, so if I understand correctly, you don't support it because it's inconsistent with what he's been doing, even though – you oppose the pullback from Syria. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Got there, it. So there, even though this is what you would want him to do. On the surface, this appears like a good thing to do. But because it's totally against his uh, foreign policy and everything else that he said he's going to do as president, what's the ulterior motive? What's he really trying to do? Does the ulterior motive matter if the end result is good? Yes, it matters. It totally matters. I'm just asking. Because then our our allies, which we are really struggling to keep now, this just totally further isolates the United States, which is a horrible situation in, in the current world affairs. You and I both agree that we should not be isolated. Right. And the, and the, and the president has done everything he can to try to isolate us, says that's his ultimate goal. Right. Is to isolate us. And this is contrary to that. And now he comes out and says, you know what? We're not going to be isolationist here. Right. And of all places, he picks Venezuela. Uh-huh. Which he's trying to negotiate some kind of trade agreement with the Chinese who have very big interest in Venezuela. So this could hurt any kind of trade agreement. And he seems to be really good friends with Vladimir Putin. So why is he <laughs> going against <laughs> Putin here, who also the Russians have huge interest in Venezuela. I think it's just a smokescreen because he's in so, the president's in so much trouble that I'm going to look like I'm actually doing something here. Well, and that's that's probably what it is. Or but. or he has no good advisors and he really doesn't realize what he's doing and he's actually doing a good thing and he probably doesn't even realize that he's going against his own philosophy here. Because it's going to get him good headlines. And right uh -huh. now he wants good headlines because he is getting much of the blame for the partial government shutdown. I don't doubt – I don't doubt that 
He's doing it to distract. So you said to tell you. I'm telling you. Why, why, I know. Why. That's that's my reasoning. I know. I, I, I we'll, we'll we'll get to that. I mean, that's fine that that's your reasoning. I disagree. I don't disagree with your reasoning. I disagree that it's a that it's a that you that you should support it, not support it because of this. Uh, so Trump said, "quote Americanism, not globalism, will be our credo." And that was during his acceptance speech at the Republican convention. Uh, as long as we are led by politicians who will not put America first, then we can be assured that other nations will not treat America with respect. This will change once he's elected, is what he went on to explain. That was it. That that was when he was received the, the Republican that, that nomination. Was his convention speech. Yes. Yes. My point, though, is I, I I completely agree that the probably one of the main motivations was. Let's do something to distract from the government shutdown or let's do let's do something that'll get some good headlines or whatever. I that's fine and I'm sure that that's probably what the liberal news media has been tearing them apart for is, you know, this is all it's it's not genuine, it's phony, it's, you know, whatever, it's fake news, it's, you know, I don't know. Something, right? I'm sure they have something. At the end of the day though, for me it boils down to I don't think there's a way that the US officially recognizing the opposition president is more bad than it is good for the people of Venezuela, which in this situation, I think is who I look at first as saying that's that's to me how I make the determination of whether or not this is we should view this as a good thing. I agree. It's an opposition. I, I mean, I wrote that down as one of the things that we've talked about um, or it appears that way. And what I mean by that is he's just making a statement. I mean, so far, we haven't done anything other than say we recognize this opposition leader as the true president. Well, but so but Maduro has said now publicly that U- U.S. ambassadors have to be out of Venezuela right. by Saturday. Yeah. OK, so now what's our response? What's going to happen tomorrow? I don't know. Are we staying? What happens next will be, I Are think, a leaving? bigger indication of whether or not it's counter because Trump has frequently commented on all kinds of world affairs without us actually doing anything about them. So my point is that what's happening right now, I don't think is even necessarily in contrast to his quote unquote foreign policy because his foreign policy involves regularly telling other nations whether or not he thinks they're doing something right. Doesn't mean that we get involved. Syria is a different example because we actually had troops there in the country doing stuff. And he's saying, no, we're taking them out. It doesn't mean we're still not going to tell Syria that they're bad people or that, you know, Russia's overreaching or whatever it might be. We're still going to comment. I'm still going to tweet. But that doesn't mean we're going to do anything for them other than use our words. Do you think the president's looking for somebody else to write love letters to? Because <clears throat> he hasn't written a couple to North Korea in a while. So well, I'm not sure now, this is Now the, he wants to write it and write them to Venezuela? Op- opposition <laughs> leaders are not usually his uh, his preference. Yeah. So. No, I just think it's more good than it is bad for the people of Venezuela. And if it helps them at all in their effort to get um, a democratically elected leader back in place, then I'm all for it. Because at the end of the day, well, we, the reason- we don't know. We can't know, right? We we don't know for sure what Trump's motives are. And again, who cares? Because it probably helps the people of Venezuela a little bit, and it makes our allies who have already come out and said that they support the opposition leader, it probably makes them feel a little bit better about having made that choice. So, you know, if it stirs the pot a little bit in Venezuela and maybe gives the military, you know, another reason to think about not continuing to support the authoritarian leader, then that's a good thing. What's going to change the Venezuelan military? From supporting Maduro. Well, if I knew that, then I'd be I'd be making a bigger ruckus about what they should be doing. Oh, okay. I don't know. You want me to tell you? Uh, I mean, probably probably what changes it. I mean, there's a lot of things that could, but at some point, obviously, uh, if the people remain impoverished enough, you already see signs that the military no, is breaking no, no, ranks. No, 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 no. The military is getting all their supplies from China and Russia. So unless the Chinese and Russians tell them to not support Maduro or if the United States is willing to negotiate with the military to not support Maduro, i.e. establishing governments favorable to the United States, 
That's what's going to change the military. They're not going to, the military is not going to, because they're not going hungry. They're in power. So they're not going to change who they support unless there's pressure from an outside source. Okay. And that outside source is going to be either China and Russia and say, hey, we need you to change because we don't want to have conflicts with the United States. Or it's going to be the U.S. going in there and negotiating something with the military of Venezuela to encourage them to change their support. Or we do a third party approach and have somebody broker it for us and we give them something. Okay, for it's doing still it. us doing it. I mean, I the, bo- the bottom line is either we're going to have to get them to side with us or we're going to have to negotiate with China and Russia and tell them to quit supporting Maduro because mm. they're the ones who have the influence. Okay. Venezuelan's military is not standing up to the world. Right. They're, they're doing what they're told, either by the Chinese, the Russians, or the United States. Okay. That, that's the way any kind of change is going to be made. They may come out and publicly say, we're doing this for all the hungry people in Venezuela. But they're not going to be. They're going to be doing it because one of the world powers has told them this is the direction we want you to take. I agree that that's a way. I I mean, obviously, that's a way that it could change is whoever is holding their leash, so to speak, you know, tightens their grip a little bit and says, hey, we're going to change direction here. Uh, But I also don't rule out the possibility that if the Venezuelan people got more organized and got, you know, emboldened enough to take on the military that you would get to a point where the military has to make a decision about, and I'm not talking about the higher ups in the military. I mean, the dudes holding the guns, not the ones that get paid super well. I mean, the 4,000 that have left because they don't like what's going on. So now you're going to start a civil war. Maybe. And that's, and more people die, which I know you're not for. Well, if if they're willing to die for what they believe in and they believe that that's the way they need to get it done, that's different than dying because they're in the line of fire in a war they don't want to be in, which is what we have in Syria. It's a very different – there's a lot of civilians in Syria who didn't and don't want to be part of – the civil war and don't support the opposition and don't support the legitimate leader either. They just want to be left the heck alone, which is why they're fleeing because it's dangerous and they have kids and it's like, you know, we want to get out of here. Um, and I don't think that, I don't think that there's that same correlation at the same scale in Venezuela yet. In other words, I think a lot of citizens would still like to see change in their country and still and how, obviously and how are hoping good, that it can. And how good, would the life for the average Venezuelan be if the military goes to support the opposition leader and China and Russia pull out their monetary support to the country? It'll probably be pretty terrible for a long time. But historically speaking, uh, obviously the bloodiest war that America ever fought was our own civil war and we rose to be a world power. So to say that civil wars are a bad thing uh, you know, just flatly, I don't, I wouldn't be okay making that claim okay, without but now examining what is, it. So now, more. what does the United States do? Well, I mean, that's our opportunity to step in and step into another country's civil war. Uh huh. Which you said is how we stay a world power. Yeah, but that's not what our president wants to do. That's fine. He stated that's not his goal. That's fine. He doesn't want us to be a world power. Okay, so we can disagree with. He wants us to be America. And that's fine. So we can disagree with him on that, but that doesn't mean that what I'm suggesting is bad. Okay. <clears throat> we might not like that this is contrary to what the president's been saying or that it's intended to distract, but it goes back to what I was trying to get at before, which is that I think it is more of a good thing than it is a bad thing. So allowing the media or others to distract by the, well, this is different than what our president says, detracts from the larger issue, which in my mind is, what does this mean for the Venezuelan people? Um, which I know is not why some people, and I'm sure some of our listeners, that's not why they care. They care because of our financial interest, our economic interest, our global standing interest in relation to China and Russia. I don't know. Maybe that's mainly why you care. 
Um, and it's okay if you do. I'm not saying that's wrong. For me, that's not why, that's not the main reason I care, which is maybe why I feel differently about what Trump's saying on this. Cause it's kind of like, yeah, that's what he does. You know, he panders to whatever's going to play well. Who cares? Because that's, that's what he does all the time. I mean, I care. I wish he didn't, but I, I'm not going to allow that to be the reason that I, that won't change that I think this is more good than it is bad. Us officially recognizing the opposition leader as the legitimate president. Fair enough. With that, Lance, we'll continue the important conversation. But of course, we couldn't do that until we remind people what we're trying to do here uh, on the True Chat Network. Well, we're having this conversation because our goal is to educate people by providing honest, open, and respectful conversations. Excellent. I think we're trying. Uh, ethics at truechat.org. I'm being respectful. Yeah. We don't agree, but we're being respectful of one another. That's right. We're being well, honest. Well, I'm going to try here in a few minutes to get a little bit more, understand Lance's, uh, you know, motives here a little bit more for this one. Uh, cause I think that when you understand why people, uh, feel the way they do, it allows you to seek empathy, um, and thereby hopefully get a better understanding of the situation. My opinion. Okay. Uh, but we'll get to that. So ethics at truechat.org if you think we're not upholding the mission. And, of course, you can always engage with us at truechat.org. We'd like to know your thoughts. Where do you stand on this? I mean, is this, you know, who who are, are you more of a landsite today? Or uh, I, I don't know. What's the, the – a just – I don't know. A, just a Justinian. A Justinian. I like mm-hmm. that. Okay. okay. Justinian. A Going back to my pope days. Okay. <laughs> if you study the <laughs> Holy Roman Empire. Yeah? The, yeah. They were called Justinians. Justinians. Okay. So are you a Justinian or a Lanceite today? Or are you, uh, I think you're both crazy. <laughs> you could be that too. So, you know, let us know at TrueChat.org. And with that, Lance, let's get back to it. So help me understand here. Um, like I said, for me, it's the, is it more good or more bad for the people of Venezuela? And I know you've already explained that you that there's the, it's inconsistent with Trump's agenda. You're saying the ends justify the means. In this case. Right. That's, that's I mean, to kind of sum up, right? Yes. I, I understand you correctly. That's what Because the means for the people right. are good. Right. <clears throat> if, the, if, if we follow through. Yes. My main concern, I guess what I'm getting at is I want to understand your main concern in this issue. I'm saying my main concern is the well-being of the Venezuelan people. And like we talked about, there's a number of other concerns, and I'm not blind to the – my second concern is probably the Russia-China component of, you know, if we just remain silent on this, it just lets them continue to exert their influence in yet another area, um, which I'm not – a big fan of. So I th- I would say that's number one and number two, and I want to understand your number one and number two concerns in this situation. Well, my big my biggest concern is like I said, the president this is totally out of character. So there has to be some kind of ulterior motive here. And I'm I'm really afraid, honestly, and I can take it this tack too, that maybe we'll explain it to you a little bit better. I'm fearful for the the people of Venezuela that might take up arms or might go to the streets thinking they have the backing of the United States. And then as we know, our president, as you aptly put it, changes his mind very quickly and for no apparent reason. And all of a sudden, his statement here could put these people at greater risk because they're going to act on something thinking they have the support of the world power of the United States of America. And then the president says, yeah, well, fake, I'm really not going to do that. And now all of a sudden they've entered into this conflict, which would probably help them in the long run if they could ever break away from Russia, China, and the United States and rule their own country and do their own thing, you know, and quit placating. Kind of like we did. Laying prostate to the superpowers of the world. Um, Way back in the day. But that's my biggest concern. Is this the president going yeah, we're supporting you today. What's he going to do tomorrow? Mm-hmm. What's he going to say on Monday? And all of a sudden, these people think they have the support of the United States. And then all of a sudden, the president says, no, never mind. We're going to move on. We have something else we're worried about now. 
or I have something else I want to talk about. So the concern is they mm-hmm. might wage into something thinking they have our backing and then our backing disappears or isn't as strong as they thought it was. Is that not? And now we've created more enemies for the United States. Right. Which is not a good thing. Because we have our senior historian. And I'm not worried about Venezuela per se, Mm -hmm. but you can't do that. I mean, this is Central and South America. Right. This is a part of the world that the president is worried about because he's afraid of these people coming into our borders, you know, crossing our borders. So it just doesn't look good. It's not – that's why I don't think it's good policy. And I'm fearful for these people because I can see the president saying this and then pulling support. And now they're into it and they're by them and they're left by themselves. So worst case scenario is they take up arms. The people of Venezuela take up arms. A civil war breaks out and those countries, U.S. included, who have recognized the opposition leader either say, no, nah, we don't anymore. Or they just kind of back off and say, well, good luck. You know, um, like we kind of still support you, but we're not going to do anything to we're help We're going you. to North Korea now. We've got a state visit in North Korea. So – you know, so we're not really worried about Venezuela this month. Sorry. So from the historical perspective. Oh, we got to go, we got to go to Puerto Rico. Oh, wait a minute. We've already been to Puerto Rico, so we won't go again. Cause we want to try to learn from history, right? Okay. Um, I'm just thinking back to this, this whole thing comes to mind of, you know, we, by many, by many, uh, measures, we are the most superior nation in the world. And it wasn't that many years ago. That uh, Well, right now, right in the history of the world, we haven't been the superior nation for a very long period of time. No, I'm just talking about, well, we haven't been a nation for a very long period. I mean, in comparison to other, in comparison to many other nations of the world, we've, we are a very young uh, country. And very warlike. Yes. Um, Well, I mean, fighting is literally in our DNA. It's how we started, right? It was, uh, we said enough is enough. Uh, we didn't like our. How do you test for that? Our illegitimate rulers. How do you, t- how do you test for fighting in your DNA? Uh, well, that's how we started. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, I mean, we were birthed out of yeah a war. Okay. So <laughs> it's you know it was there at birth. So maybe it's okay. not in our DNA. We were just kind of drenched in it. I gotcha. Don't know. Okay. Yeah. So maybe it's not. Maybe we're you know. Were we baptized? We're pa- pacifist at heart, but we got baptized in the in the war blood or something. I don't know. Um, but so we, you know, we we stand up to what we looked at as a as a government who didn't care about us, which okay. is not all that different from what's going on right now, mm-hmm. right in mm-hmm. Venezuela. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we, you know, and we fought. Uh, and we sought outside support. And for mm-hmm. a good while, we couldn't find anybody who wanted to uh, – anybody who mattered who wanted to, you know, say, yeah, we're on your team because uh, they – most of them probably thought that we were nuts. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't stand up to the world power. You know, that's just – you don't do that. Um, but we did and we won. Um, some luck, right? Some skill and strategy or – a whole lot of luck and a little bit of uh, skill and strategy, and uh, and then we and then we move on, and then we fight this civil war uh, to determine how we are going to identify, kind of morally as a people, uh, what we believe about not only the ability to own others, you know, the basic human rights, but also things like the role of small government versus big government. Um, and then we come out of it and agrarian nation versus industrial superpower. Exactly. Uh, and then we keep evolving and we go on to participate in two world wars and then multiple other international conflicts all the way up till today. Um, so very much, a uh, a, a war based, you know, nation for the most part. And I mean, for a lot about, of our history, we you forget been, about wiping out the native people in there and massacring the native right. people is probably more. Does it more justice? Mm -hmm. My point in all this is... The second American Revolution and the War of 1812. Isn't it possible that there could be long-term a a good, a very positive side to Venezuela having a civil war? That it ultimately leads to the people regaining control and deciding their own fate? If they can keep the world powers... Out of their affairs. But that 
you can't count on that. Right. I mean, we were left to our, to our own volition. Which is some luck. Mm -hmm. I mean, because it's not just everybody decided to be nice. I mean, it's kind of like we, we got lucky. That's what I meant before is it's, right. it can't happen for everybody because we did have one of those stars aligned kind of moments where ge geographically we were in the right place for it to happen. Um, and we were far enough away from the center of power yeah. to where. And they were worried about other stuff. And they were worried about themselves and they're fighting each other and they left us alone. And, you know, well, maybe the U.S. and, you know, not and I don't mean fighting on the battlefield, but maybe the U.S., China, Russia, North Korea. Maybe we're all too busy <clears throat> with each other to really, you know, if, if they plunge into civil war and we can't rely on them for anything anymore, like oil, then but, but, but I, that, that's the whole point. Yeah. I'm going back to my opening <laughs> statement. <laughs> Why should we care? You just made my point for me. Oil. That's why none of what you just said is going to happen. Well, but we, because we don't care are, because of the oil, because we don't need it. Now we're exporting oil. Exactly. But if we but can, Russia and China care. if we can control it, we can hurt the Chinese and the Russians, which enable us to stay in power. Okay. So more reason for us to stay strong and support them, right? Yes. What about, yes. what about, but we have a president who says he doesn't want to support foreign countries. Well, un unless they can help his agenda, maybe. So what about this idea? What if Trump okay. was actually trying to be really strategic and say, I want a better deal with the Chinese. And if we can get control, you know, influence in Venezuela, that could help me leverage a better deal with them. I'd love it. But he hasn't shown me that he's that smart. Well, I think that would be a great can't show plan. your hand, Lance. <laughs> oh, you know, okay. Man, he's, uh, play, right. he's playing the dumb card, right, and the, you know, okay. and the and the. So well, after two years, he's going to come out and actually. Right. This is all part of the plan. I got you. This is okay. all part of the plan. We've dumbed down the world and their expectations, and now he can come out right. and make his move. They're distracted with he's all. He's got the Trump the, card this, ready to play, right? Exactly. Boom. Okay. Boom. I hope he has one too. And it's and it's his picture from Twitter. Our producer should have the little drum roll there because that was good. Yeah. That the Trump card. He I would, he would play the Trump card. But that's a possibility. I think he was asleep in there because he wasn't. Okay. Yeah. He did. He doesn't like our conversation. Yeah. I don't think he didn't like that one. Yeah. So uh, producing for today's show. Uh, special thanks to Caleb Spinner or Spiner, if you fancy. I suppose. Um, that's funny because I mispronounced it uh, when. When I first asked him his last name, how to spell it. Yeah. So, but that's no surprise because I misspell things and mispronounce things. Uh, yeah. So there you have it. All right. You got anything else you want to add? I mean, you've drilled my opinion, but I'm strong in it. So I don't, I don't think I, so. I, okay. Anything else you want to go? Final thing from you. Okay. Are civil wars for nations on the average better or worse? Net negative or net positive for nations that go undergo a civil war? Net negative. Okay. Okay. I'm just curious. We've got the senior historian. In our case, net positive or net negative? History will have to decide. <laughs> oh, ooh, the cop out. Because no, okay. I think no, no, I don't think it's a cop out. I think we're still dealing with it. Sure. I think everybody's missing the point. I mean, in the history of nations Just because we did the war didn't mean the, it was the over. time from our civil war is not a long period of time. You know, here in America, oh, I'm going to go visit this house because it's 200 years old. You know, and you go to Europe, oh, this church is 1,500 years old. <laughs> right. You know, we, we in America have no clue as to what age really is. Yep. And so I, I, when I say that, I mean that because we're still working through some things. With, oh, yeah. With minorities and women and other groups and federal versus coming, local government coming into power. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and procreating faster. And so that they are going to be the new power sources in the United States, not the white male. Um, which is, I'm, you know, I don't have a problem with that. Even being a white male, I don't have a problem with that. But that's all. But now we're seeing some pushback against that. And all of that has to goes back to, I think, our civil war. So I still think that history will have to write 
whether it was a net positive or a net negative. It's been a net positive so far. But what if it leads to the downfall of our nation? Mm-hmm. As we know it. Okay. Then it, would be, then it would have to be a net negative, right? Yeah. In the history books 300 years from now. So that's it where— It depends on how esoter- esoteric you want to get with the whole— you know, net negative relative to our nation or maybe net positive relative to the world. I mean, I, but right now it's a net I would say it's a net positive, but that but I still think right. that we're working through some of the issues that have been caused by our civil war. Absolutely. And, I, and, I definitely agree with that. And I so mean, therefore the final answer cannot be written yet. Race is still a problem a hundred and forty plus years later. Government's so. a problem. Yeah. Geography is still a problem. Sure. Demographics yeah. are still a problem. And that's because we're super young. So we – relative to some of those we're other nations. We're still forming. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, let us know your thoughts at TrueChatORG on all the social media. Lance, where where can people listen if uh, if they if they want – to tune in. You know, they've listened and they want to tell other people how to listen. What's the best way? Um, Apple well, Podcasts. Okay. We're fine. Anywhere where fine podcasts are found. But your favorite one is? Uh, Stitcher. I thought it was Spotify Not was your favorite. Was. I say Spotify the best. Okay. Stitcher's my favorite. Stitcher's your favorite. But I say Spotify. Spotify. Is my best one. Got it. For the state of us on True Chat in Urbana, I'm Justin T. Weller. And I'm Lance Jackson. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you on Monday. In the meantime, be the change.